Hey everyone, uh, I thought I'd share, do a wee video uh, just talking about how some aspects of the mind-body connection works. You know, many of you know that I kind of got into the mind-body connection because I worked as a scientist in the pharmaceutical industry. And I remember talking to, you know, some of my colleagues when I was really fascinated by the placebo effect and I, and I wanted to know how it works. You know, it was a lot of people assumed at the time that, you know, people just get better. Placebo effect was a kind of nuisance. And, and I started to, you know, suggest that maybe belief itself was sort of fiddling about with the brain chemistry and body chemistry and kind of causing a, a physical effect in the brain. That was kind of dismissed. Uh, at, the, at the time, some of my colleagues, to be honest, actually laughed at, at the idea that, you know, the mind consciousness could somehow cause a physical effect. But in actual fact, we know that that is factually uh, correct. I mean, this was up 20 years ago or so. We know that that's factually correct. Now, I mean, for example, the placebo effect, the way that it, one of the ways that it works is that the brain produces what it needs to produce to deliver that which you believe is supposed to happen. That's a lot in one sentence, isn't it? Let, let, me, let me explain by giving you an example. So with pain, let's say a person is given a placebo for pain, but they believe it's the actual real painkiller. Now, what they would get most of the time is some degree of reduction in pain. But it's not just all in the mind. It's not like a fake reduction in pain. It's a real reduction in pain because their belief that I should have a reduction in pain, that belief causes the brain to produce what it needs to produce to deliver that reduction in pain. So the brain doesn't just produce a, a vast array of substances in this sense, it produces something very specific to deliver that which the person believes is supposed to happen. Now, what do they believe is supposed to happen? Well, a reduction in pain. And the brain says, well, how do I produce a reduction in pain? Well, okay. I have my own natural painkillers, which happen to be the brain's natural version of morphine. So endogenous opiates, meaning they belong to, your, to yourself. So the brain produces its own natural painkillers to deliver that which the person believes is supposed to happen. But think about what's happening here. The, the, the brain is producing what it needs to produce to deliver that result. But what is giving the brain that direction is a belief, is... You could say the contents of your consciousness almost points the brain in a particular direction so that the brain produces specific substances to give that particular result. Isn't that fascinating? So in other words, the belief or the contents of your consciousness literally guide the brain. They, they steer the brain in a particular direction to produce some very specific substances. But here's the thing, though. That's a very much more broad concept because visualisation works in the same way. I mean, many of you know that I talk a lot about using visualisation in a number of different ways. But when you visualise something or imagine something happening, you know, then the brain also produces what it needs to produce to deliver the result. But it's not the result that you believe this time. It's the result that you're imagining. So let's take a well-known type of example from sports or physiotherapy, you know, that's often used uh, to help people recover from, uh, from, from stroke, for example, or even perform better in a particular sport, is where you, let's say, you visualise a movement repetitively. So let's use a basic example where you imagine repetitively lifting weights. Now, what ultimately happens, to cut a long story short, is when you do that, you actually get stronger. Isn't that amazing? You think, whoa, I've just imagined lifting weights and I've now actually got stronger or faster or able to move better. Now, what's happened is the brain has produced what it needs to produce to deliver that exact Result, isn't that amazing? So when you visualise getting stronger, the brain says, okay, what, do you, what can I produce to deliver that result? So therefore the brain out of its vast array of substances produces very specifically what it needs to produce, ultimately, eh, to deliver that gain in, in strength. But this time, again, it's not belief that's guiding the direction of what the brain does, it's imagination that's guiding the direction. But in both cases, ultimately, it's the contents of your consciousness. Isn't that amazing? So uh, if you think about the mind-body connection in that way, it's not the brain just acting randomly. 
It's the contents of your consciousness, whether in this context, belief or imagination, that's actually guiding the brain, sort of nudging the brain and saying, here is the result I would like. Can you do that, please? And the brain sort of goes, I no problem at all. I can do a lot. I can do amazing things. Check me out. And here the brain, in one case, the brain would delivers a reduction in pain because that's what you believe. In this, the other case, the brain delivers an increase in strength because that's what you're imagining. Isn't that amazing? I find these kind of things, you know, mind blowing, really fascinating. Anyway, I just thought I'd jump on. I was writing some stuff this afternoon on this. I was, you know, just simplifying the whole notion of the mind-body connection and taking like tons and tons of scientific papers condensed into like one or two pages and I thought you know I'm just going to jump on on a quick video here and, and blether about it so anyway wherever you are enjoy the rest of your day and, and also just be kind I say a lot that a lot on my other videos but just do it anyway because kindness is always the right thing to do bye for now